Hello and welcome to Grade 10 English Lessons. This is Unit 6, Episode 4. In this episode, we're going to learn how to summarize a text and how to translate from Arabic into good English. So to begin, let's look at this quote together. We never know the worth of water till the well is dry. This is by Thomas Fuller. Now, do you agree with this quote or do you not? Now open your workbook to page 48 and let's summarize. However, I'd like to ask you first, what is a summary? A summary is a shortened text written in your own words. Now pay attention to the following, in your own words. That means that you have to paraphrase. So how do you paraphrase? You can by shortening some ideas, by changing the vocabulary, changing the word or the verb form, that means from an active into passive, as well as changing the word class. For example, from a noun to an adjective or a noun into a verb, etc. Now let's practice paraphrasing and look at the student's book at page 34, the second paragraph. Nature reserves have to make sure they always have enough sustenance for all the different breeds of animals. Let's look at the sentence. Now, which vocabulary words can we change? We have the word have to. It also means need to, have got to, or require to. They are all different words that give us the same meaning. When it comes to make sure, it also means assure, ensure, or check. Now, the word always, it means consistently, constantly, and continually. Last but not least, we have the word sustenance. It could also mean food or nourishment. Different, it has different synonyms, diverse, several, and various. Now, if we change these vocabulary items into different ones, for example, we use need to instead of have to, check instead of make sure, constantly instead of always, food instead of sustenance, and various instead of difference. We'll have the following sentence. Nature reserves need to check that they constantly have enough food for all the various breeds of animals. There are different sentences, right? Different words, however, the meaning is intact. We did not change the meaning. Now. Do we paraphrase every single word in a sentence? No, definitely not. So let's go ahead and take some summary making tips. First of all, summaries are not a place for your background knowledge, opinions, or personal information. So keep that in mind. How do you summarize a text? First of all, you need to read the text. You need to not let big words scare you. If a certain word is too difficult for you to understand, then I recommend that you read the sentence again to understand the context, and that will help you guess the meaning of that particular word. Last but not least, ask yourself, what is this, this text about? What are the ideas involved inside the text? Pay attention to the following. Your summary should be in complete sentences. Don't leave empty spaces for words that you don't know. It should cover the main points and key ideas, so pay attention to that. The summary should be in your own words, that means you paraphrase. It shouldn't be written in points, and this is very important. Doing so will affect your format and will affect your grade in the summary. Last but not least, your summary should not be off topic. Now, let's look at the rubrics, and these are the things that you have to pay attention to and keep in mind when you summarize. First of all is the content and the relevance of ideas. Make sure that your ideas and your content are related to the text and is connected to the question of the summary. The second one is paraphrasing. Just like we did in the beginning in the practice, you change sentences into your own words. Again, either by changing the vocabulary or by changing the verb class, making certain ideas shorter, or by changing the sentence from an active into passive. 
So these four different techniques will help you in paraphrasing. Then we have spelling and grammar. Make sure that you pay attention to these things. Last but not least is the format, which is also important. Your summary should be in a paragraph. It shouldn't be in points. All of this will give you the total of your summary. Now, these are also some important information. Copying the whole paragraph receives a zero. The question is only asking you to summarize into four sentences. You don't need to copy the full paragraph. Doing so will give you a zero. Another thing is exceeding the required number of sentences, and I'll explain this. For example, if you write five sentences instead of four, then you lose five marks. If you write six sentences and above, then you lose 10 marks. Again, we only need four sentences. Now open your student's book to page 47 and look at the text. Let's read it together. 30 kilometers west of Kuwait City is a truly remarkable place where the low wet greenery is a striking contrast to the surrounding landscape. This is a Jahra Pools Nature Reserve, Kuwait's only inland and completely man-made freshwater space. Officially founded in 1990, the 250 hectares of marshes were formed from different waste or from effluent waste flowing from the, mere, from the nearby town of Al Jahra. Incredibly, this waste has now become a significant environmental site. The reserve has become a crucial sanctuary for birds, with over 220 recorded species, including 17 birds of prey. This makes the, wet, the wetlands one of the best bird watching sites in the Middle East. And just one day spent beside the red line pools or the red line pools, bird watchers can see a variety of buzzards, eagles, vultures, and Harriers. Autumn and spring are the best time for bird watchers. During these seasons, the area attracts an estimated total of 2,000 to 3,000 birds who migrate to refuel themselves on the reserve's rich vegetation. You can continue the rest of the reading. Now let's look at the question. In four sentences only, summarize and paraphrase the the passage in an answer to the following question. Again, look at the word summarize and paraphrase. Pay attention to them and make sure you stick to these two things. The question says, how does Al Jahra Pools Nature Reserve help birds? If you look at the text after reading it, we've underlined our answers and we have a total of around four to five answers. Now, let's look at how we can paraphrase each of these sentences into our own words using the techniques that I've taught you in the beginning of the lesson. For the first sentence, during these seasons, the area attracts an estimated total of 2,000 to 3,000 birds which migrate to refuel themselves on the reserve's rich vegetation. Now, if you look at the sentence, it's a very long idea. It's a long sentence. I think we can make it shorter in order to paraphrase. We also have the word migrate. We can find a different word for it. We can change it. Here we have the paraphrase sentence. First, during autumn and spring, the area attracts many migrating birds which refuel themselves on the reserve's rich vegetation. So what did we do in this paraphrase sentence? First of all, we use the, the sequence word or the connector first. Doing so will help us organize our summary. The second thing we did is we take, or we've took a long idea, we've taken it and then we made it shorter. We've also changed the word migrate to migrating. This is a different word class. Now let's look at the second sentence. al Pools Nature Reserve offers vital protection for birds in Kuwait and the Middle East. This is an active sentence. Let's turn it into the passive. And, in or and to remind you, in order to change an active sentence into the passive, we need to find the object. 
The object in this, in this sentence is birds. So, the paraphrased sentence would look like the following. Second, birds in Kuwait and the Middle East are offered vital protection by al Jahara Pools Nature Reserve. What we did here, we used the word second as our connector, and we've changed an active sentence into a passive sentence. So, so far we've applied three different techniques. Let's look at the third one. A 70 hectare space has been fenced off to provide a refuge from hunting and to protect the bird's habitat from destruction. We have the words refuge and habitat. How about you try to find different words for these two items? Third, a 70 hectare space has been fenced off to provide sanctuary from hunting and to protect the bird's environment from destruction. Here we use the word third as our connector or sequence word. We change the word refuge to sanctuary, a different word that has the same meaning. And we've changed habitat to environment. Now, if you compare both sentences, you'll realize the meaning is intact. We did not change it. Now, let's look at our last sentence. Two full-time guards have been monitoring the reserve since 1993 to control trespassing. We have the word monitoring and the word control. Let's change it together. The paraphrase sentence will look like the following. Finally, two full-time guards have been observing the reserve since 1993 to limit trespassing. So we use the sequence word finally for our final sentence. We change the word monitoring to observing. This is a vocabulary item we've learned in the previous episodes and the previous units. And we change the word control to limit. It's a synonym, but it gives us the same meaning. This is how your summary should look like. First, during autumn and spring, the area attracts many migrating birds which refuel themselves on the reserve's rich vegetation. Second, birds in Kuwait and the Middle East are offered vital protection by Al Jahra Pools Nature Reserve. Third, a 70 hectare space has been fenced off to provide sanctuary from hunting and to protect the birds' environment from destruction. Finally, two full time guards have been observing the reserve since 1993 to limit trespassing. So if you look at the summary, it's in paragraph formats. We used sequence words or connectors to organize the summary. And we've paraphrased the sentences into our own words. So I recommend that you do the same for your own. Now that we're done with the summary, let's go ahead to the translation. Let's take the tips first. The first tip, which is a very important one, translate meanings not words, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. Avoid word-for-word -word translation. Don't leave spaces for words that you don't know. Last but not least, look for keywords that make a difference. Now, translate the following into good English. To add the mahmiyat al-tabi'iyya makanan mulaiman lil-hifaz ala al-tuyur wal-hayawanat al-muhaddada bil -inqirat. So we have the word al-mahmiyat, which means reserve. Lil-hifaz, which means to preserve. Al-muhaddada, which means threatened. Last but not least, we have the word bil-inqirat. It means extinction. So if you translate only these keywords, this is how the sentence would look like. Reserves, preserve, threatened, or threatened extinction. Now, do we accept this translation or do we reject it? Obviously, we reject it. The reason why is because we have spaces. So don't leave spaces for words that you don't know. And avoid word-for-word -word translation. When we did that, we have the word or the sentence threatened extinction. It doesn't make sense. So again, avoid word-for-word -word translation. 
This is how a good translation would look like. Nature reserves are considered a suitable place to preserve birds and animals that are threatened with extinction. Now it's your turn. I've given you the skills that you need and the technique. Now it's up to you to practice it. Translate the following into good English. In the site, ورش المبيدات على النباتات تدمر بيئة الحيوانات وتؤدي إلى انقراضها. Again, to remind you, the first thing you need to do is look for keywords that make a difference. Doing so will help you find the easiest words and the best translations for them. So here are your keywords: المبيدات تدمر بيئة الحيوانات and انقراضها. Take a few minutes to translate, and then we'll check the, your, your answers together. So this is our translation. Hunting and spraying pesticides on plants destroy animals' habitats and lead to their extinction. If this is how your translation looks like, excellent job. If not, I recommend you keep practicing. So in this episode, we paraphrased and summarized a paragraph. We've also translated sentences into good English. Thank you for watching.